Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today video, we are going to discuss about Azure Application Gateway Ingress Controller. So Azure Application Gateway Ingress Controller is an open source project which help us to integrate AKS cluster with application gateway. So if you can see in this particular diagram, application gateway is not a part of AKS cluster. It's a separate service on Azure Cloud and AKS cluster is a separate service on the Azure Cloud. But somehow, or with the help of AGIC, we are going to integrate Azure Application Gateway with AKS Cluster. So we can utilize the features of Application Gateways like uh, uh, Web Application Firewall, L7 Load Balances. So we can route the traffic uh, through Application Gateway to our services. So what is AGIC? So as we already discussed, it's, uh, it's help us to integrate AKS with application gateway. So with Azure application gateway ingress controller, we can expose our Kubernetes application deployed on AKS cluster using Azure application gateway L7 load balancer. So what does it mean basically? So whatever the applications uh, we are going to deploy in our uh, AKS cluster, that application or that pod will have a public IP or private IP and, and we cannot expose that particular IP because of security concern. So what we do, we will use a load balancer and we can configure load balancer to consume or to route the traffic through load balancer to the our application or in, in this case a pod. So we will expose only the application gateway IP addresses to the internet or to the outer world and we will not expose internal IP address or public IP address, direct public, public IP address of the pod because of security reasons. The ingress controller run as a pod within the AKS cluster. So whenever uh, we are configuring this AGIC, the ingress controller will run on a AKS services as a pod. If you can see on this particular di diagram, this is another a pod which is deployed when we configure AGIC. It consumes Kubernetes ingress resources and convert them, them to a Azure application gateway configuration. So how basically application gateway will work? As we already know, if we have to interact with AKS, we have to go through the uh, Kubernetes API server because it has it is the entry point of our AKS cluster. So what AGIC does, it basically monitor the resources or the from with the help of Kubernetes API, like the what all the ports we need to deploy or what all the configurations we require to expose through App Gateway, and it then convert. If you can see on this particular line, it consumes Kubernetes ingress resources with the help of Kubernetes API, and then convert them to an Azure application gateway configuration. And then what it, it collect all the data which is required of whatever application we want to expose, and then it apply, apply this configuration to the Azure resource manager. Then Azure resource manager applied that particular configuration to app gateway. And then app gateway directly communicate with the pod. So there is no mediator or between uh, applicative and pod so latency will be reduced so azure resource manager applies the changes to the application gateway and continuously do the reconfiguration of application gateway so whatever the configuration you are going to change on your pod on your application this agic container oh sorry a pod will always monitor your resources through the API and it will apply the configuration to the Azure Resource Manager and from Azure Resource Manager it will apply to the App Gateway and based on your configuration or your changes, App Gateway will work accordingly. So that how basically AGIC work. <laughs> now there are some confusion what is ingress controller and what is load balancer. So first let's see what is ingress controller. So in AKS ingress is used to let external components interact with resources that are inside the cluster. Suppose if we are using a private AKS cluster, then we cannot access anything which we have inside the AKS cluster because it's like private. Similarly, if we have public AKS cluster also and we, we want to expose our application to the outer world, 
then we require some kind of services which basically internally interact with your application and it will help us to expose to the outer world so that's basically a functionality or the purpose of ingress controller in AKS so ingress is handled by an ingress controller there are many of them so for example we can use NGNI NGNX is a again it's an ingress controller and then we have a Lesto, then traffic AGIC so these are the ingress controllers we can utilize uh, to expose to the to your application to the outer world whatever what whatever technology you use either you are using nginx or lesto or traffic agic you really on a load balancer service to serve the traffic now we will see what's the difference between load balancer and a ingress controller so a load balancer is a kubernetes service that operate at the transport layer 4 if you uh, if you heard about osi model there are seven layers so every layers function very differently it sounds like a networking model basically it is a networking model so it uh, so a load balancer is a kubernetes service that operate at a transport layer 4 and is primarily responsible for distributing network traffic at the ip address and a port level so if you are using, if you know, uh, whenever we create a AKS cluster, it all automatically create a standard load balancer for us. So the load balancer, the purpose of load balancer is it basically work based on your IP or port rule. Like it distribute the traffic accordingly, uh, like what are the ports you have opened or what all the IPs you have configured based on that basically load balancer work. And load balancer implemented as a Kubernetes service resources of type load balancer. So as, as I told you, uh, whenever you create an AKS cluster, it automatically create a standard load balancer. What ingress controller operate at the application layer 7. So it work at the top layer, 7 layer and it is used for HTTP and HTTPS traffic and control. So like based on your uh, URL rewriting, there are many other uh, rules we will see in demo. So, so basically our uh, ingress controller work on a layer 7 load balancer and it is quite uh, advanced from the load simple or uh, standard load balancer. There are many options which you can enable with the help of ingress controller like web application firewall and etc. Ingress defined as a Kubernetes ingress resources. So if you can see here load balancer implement as a Kubernetes services resources but of type load balancer ingress defined as a kubernetes ingress resources <coughs> now the point is when to choose ingress controller or where when we should use or choose load balancer so let's see the selection between ingress and uh, uh, load balancer depend on your unique use case and requirements obviously uh, based on our requirement we have to select what what best suits in our uh, case so choose ingress when when you have these requirements then you should uh, choose or select ingress controller so you need superior http routing abilities such as host primarily based routing and url direction primary based routing for example uh, you have application sorry you have deployed application and that is something like the domain name till domain like for example www.amazon.com that is a common but again you want slash order slash cart slash or uh, any product some kind of uh, URL writing you need suppose you have one application and it has multiple sub modules or sub components in that case you should use URL direction or URL writing things multi tenancy is a requirement and you want to host a couple of packages on an identical crust cluster ssl and tls permission is important to offload encryption from backend services so in on if you have all these requirements then so you should use uh, ingress controller choose load balancer when you need to expose services to the public internet or an external network with a stable ip addresses like a static IP address if you are using in that case you can use a load balancer 
if you need high availability and low distribution are crucial for your application in that case also you can use load balancer advanced http routing features are not required and you want a simple and efficient way to distribute network traffic so basically in simple words ingress controller is a more advanced way of uh, configuring or distributing or your traffic or load on your application and load balancer is some kind of a basic uh, purpose load balancer now if you can see on this particular diagram i have taken an example of in cluster ingress controller it means it could be a nginx for example in our case we are going to take a nginx as a ingress in cluster ingress controller and this is the agis like app gateway ingress controller so what is the different things like how basically both the services work differently so let's understand in cluster ingress controller so if you can see here we have a customer here and this is simply going through the public IP address of the load balancer then it going to the ingress controller services then it is going to the ingress controller port from ingress port it is going to go over application port or application where we are running so if you can see it is it has to go through the multiple uh, go through the multiple object or resources to the application so in cluster ingress the the performance or the latency will be 700 110 milli per second so that is that is very quite high use aks cluster compute resources for traffic flow so whatever the traffic from the end user it's going through it is consuming the all the resources suppose here as soon as it interact with the ingress controller it is going to utilize this particular resources then ingress port resources again the application uh, resources so it is going to utilize all the resources which it has to go through so that's why the performance will be little down in the, in the case of in cluster ingress controller if you can see the performance 700 110 millisecond per request that is quite high in case of nginx if i, I have taken an example here what in case of app gateway ingress controller this is the again the end user similarly we have a app gateway here here also we have application gateway but if you can see here we don't have any middle man in application gateway ingress controller it is from app gateway it is directly going to the pod so the performance is high in this case the request transaction is much more high in comparison in comparison to or in cluster ingress controller so 480 millisecond per request it can execute and aks compute resources are not used for traffic flow so whatever the traffic flow is happening between a consumer to the application it is not using any kubernetes resources it is directly going through the app gateway because uh, in previous slide as we discussed let me uh, go back to my first slide not oh, sorry second slide if you can see here everything this particular agic controller pod is monitoring and is going through the azure resource manager and from here it's going to the app gateway and from here it's directed going to the pod so there is no latency issue like performance will be high on in this case let me go back to my okay so here similar thing it has to go through the multiple resources but in case of app gateway it is directly going to the pod because in backend agic is managing all the things agic use aks compute resources just to transform ingress service manifest to app gateway configuration as we discussed like whatever the configuration it is capturing from api server it is applying to the uh, azure resource manager only that time the traffic it, it is uh, going through the like the traffic is going through that in that, that particular way so agic use aks compute resources just to transform ingress service manifest to app gateway config and submit to the azure resource manager only during resources create update or delete only when these actions will be performed 
then only uh, it is basically a traffic is traffic is flowing otherwise it is not flowing. if you are not making any changes on your application then it directly go through this app gateway to the pod now we will see how we can uh, deploy our AGIC with AKS so there are two ways we can utilize using AZ AKS add-on which I will discuss like in the AKS cluster under networking tab you have a option called AZ application gateway add-on from it there you can directly enable it and that is also that is a recommended way from the Microsoft document as per the Microsoft document and another way are using Helm so again there are option like when we should use AG, uh, this particular way or when we should use uh, Helm so again first we will see uh, again uh, there are two ways a uh, green field and brown field there are two ways to uh, deploy on a same like in Helm also we have a green field and a brown field and AKS also we have, a, we have a green field and a brown field first answer what is green field and brown field so green field means deploying completely a new infrastructure from scratch we don't have any existing thing we are deploying complete infra from the scratch in that case you should use green field as a deployment option and brownfield is making changes in the existing infrastructure if you have already uh, AKS on that you are going to make changes in that case uh, you should use a brownfield option so using AZ AKS add-on automatic updates fully managed service provided by Microsoft deployment is simple Azure recommended so these are the benefit you will you uh, you will have if you are using is a AKS add-on and if you are using Helm manually you have to upgrade AGIC shared same app gateway can be shared with other Azure services if you want like if you are looking for a cost prospective then in that case you can utilize uh, using Helm option because the same application gateway can gateway you can use with other resources as well but in the case of easy AKS add-on you cannot use that application gateway with other uh, services or resources in AKS so that is the uh, disadvantage support additional features like burgers level and authentication type so these are the benefits you will get uh, based on the option deployment option you are going to choose for your application so I think that's all for today uh, in next video we are going to create a uh, complete uh, AKS cluster and we are going to enable Azure uh, AGIC component and we are going to deploy application and we will see how basically to work so thank you so much see you in next video